Daarnaast blijkt uit onderzoek dat antisemitisme en homofoob geweld velig tieren onder Marokkanen. De legitimatie voor deze ellende, de islam. Verzoekt de regering haar angstige en politiek correcte houding ten aanzien van de islam te laten varen. En de negatieve invloed van deze kwaadaardige ideologie die moet worden tegengegaan. Verzoekt de regering de islam zoveel mogelijk uit Nederland te bannen. En gaat over tot de orde van de dag. Seorang pengkleteran adalah mantan politikus sayap kanan Belanda yang terkenal karena kebenciannya terhadap Islam dengan partai anti-Islamnya. Kebenciannya diawali ketika ia memasuki perguruan tinggi, Joran Van Cleveren memilih terjun ke dalam dunia politik. Dia bergabung dengan partai kebebasan PVV dengan tujuan menghapus Islam dari Belanda. Ia menganggap Islam sebagai agama berbahaya setelah apa yang dia lihat di media dan yang menimpa orang-orang terdekatnya. Atas dasar itulah kemudian ia menulis buku anti-Islam. After high school, I went to a university and I did comparative religion. And a remarkable thing, I think, was that the first day of me going to college was uh, September 11, 2001. Already thought, okay, these Muslim guys are kind of crazy and this religion isn't the truth. Then a few years later was this guy in the Netherlands called Theo van Gogh, Theo van Gogh. He was a famous filmmaker and he was killed in the street. He was shot and they tried to slit his throat and they put a knife in his stomach with a letter on it for another girl. Yeah, and Hishi Ali, and it was it said, "You are next." So it strengthened my anti-Islam feelings in such a way that I thought, "Well, I have to become politically active to do something and stop this evil of harming our country." You started politics because of Islam. Yeah, and that had really had to do with Islam. That was the reason that I wanted to write a book to explain to people why Islam was a danger for the world. Menurut siapa sangka, keputusan Joran Van Cleveren menulis buku anti-Islam dengan tujuannya menyebarkan pemahaman bahwa Islam agama yang berbahaya bagi dunia malah membuatnya meragukan agamanya sendiri. Mulai dari konsep Trinitas yang sejak dulu tidak ia pahami hingga keabadian Tuhan yang dipertanyakan karena Yesus mati di tiang salib menjadi pertanyaan kunci yang harus ia dapatkan jawabannya. What separates the Christians from the Muslims is that I believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. Yeah, in in a more uh, philosophical way, I believed he was God himself, of course. I believed in the resurrection and crucifixion of Christ, of course, and I believed in the atonement. So, but because the Trinity is a very complex concept, whether you believe it or not, it's still very complex. Because if there is a God in the Bible, it says God is eternal. But if you are eternal and at the same in the same you die, you cannot be eternal and more at the same time. So it was something when I was a little older, 16, 17, I started questioning things like that. It's not very logical. I talked to many, many priests, preachers, even rabbis, and the answers I got weren't very satisfying. That made it for me kind of complex. And, and in the end, I had some doubts about this, stuff like this. But I said, well, I set it aside and I thought, okay, I just, I just believe it and perhaps I'm not smart enough to get the whole picture. And I still believed in uh, God. I still believe that Jesus was a very important person. I believe he was the son of God, but how it exactly was, I, I left it for what it was. Semakin banyak buku yang ia baca dan semakin besar usahanya dalam menulis buku anti-Islam, pada akhirnya ia meyakini konsep tauhid dalam Islam sebagai sebuah kebenaran, karena ia akhirnya menemukan injilnya sendiri mengajarkan konsep tauhid yang sama. Trinity and I saw Tawhid, yeah, the oneness of God in Islam, I thought, yeah, it sounds a little bit more logical. And then I thought to myself, well, I reread the Bible to see, to refresh myself, to see, okay, why isn't the concept of Islam, the Tawhid concept, isn't the Christian concept? But when I was reading the Old Testament and I saw what the Old Testament prophets said, it was one God, one God, one God. And then I thought, okay, I'll look only at the words of Jesus Christ in the New Testament. And then there's this story in the New Testament that where a guy comes to Jesus and and he asks him what is the most important thing 
in life? How can I gain paradise? And he says there are two things. He says, here, O Israel, here your God is one. Treat your neighbor as you want to be treated yourself. So I thought, well, even Jesus Christ says, here, O Israel, your God is one. So I thought, well, this whole Muslim concept of God sounds more logical. And it's the same concept that I find in the Old and the New Testament. And I know Christianity as a religion teaches something else, but it isn't the concept of God that I find in the Bible. So after weeks and weeks of study, reading, rereading all kinds of books, I thought to myself, okay, perhaps this oneness of God is something that is true. So that's how it started. Perlahan namun pasti, seiring berjalannya waktu, pengaman yang salah tentang Islam menjadi berubah. Pandangannya bahwa Islam adalah agama yang penuh kekerasan, agama yang menindas wanita, serta agama yang anti-demokrasi berganti menjadi sebaliknya. Dan pada akhirnya, ia menerima Islam sebagai agama kebenaran. Well, I put all the books away and I put uh, the books on the highest shelf. But there were so many books that a lot of books fell off the shelf. And one of the books that fell off the shelf was the Quran. And when I picked it up, my hand was on a page with Surah 22, Ayat 46. And it says, it's not the eyes that are blind, but the hearts. And I thought to myself, that really is my problem because it wasn't the eyes. I, I really could see what I written down myself. Nobody forced me to write this book. Nobody said you have to write this or that. I started writing myself and I could see it with my own eyes, but I still couldn't accept the fact that I said, he is a prophet. There is this one God. I just couldn't. So it wasn't my eyes that were blind, but it was really my heart. I couldn't accept it. I think my nafs or my nafs or whatever, my ego, I, I couldn't accept it. And I said, well, God, I don't care if it's the God from the Bible or the Quran, give me a sign or something so that I 100% sure know this is the way. And I went to bed, but when I woke up, I felt very secure in myself. I really felt very secure. I've never been more secure about anything else. The whole anxiety or the whole doubting issue disappeared like, like snow for the sun. And I thought to myself, well, I think I'm a Muslim. Well, and then of course I had to tell other people. Hidayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hadir pada setiap insan yang dia kehendaki. Tidak ada yang menyangka aktivis anti-Islam yang berjuang mengusir umat muslim dari negaranya malah akhirnya memeluk Islam. Seperti pada zaman Rasulullah SAW ketika Umar bin Khattab yang ingin sekali membunuh Nabi Muhammad SAW akhirnya malah ia memeluk Islam dan menjadi pembela Islam hingga akhir hayatnya. Subhanallah. Semoga video ini bermanfaat. Untuk video wawancara Joran, Pan Clever, dan selengkapnya, bisa Anda saksikan di link yang ada di deskripsi.